Copyright 2017 Win Your Brand. All rights reserved. This video is subject to copyright owned by Win Your Brand. Any reproduction or republication of all or part of this video is expressly prohibited, unless Win Your Brand has explicitly granted its prior written consent. All other rights reserved. <laughs> okay, so. Um if you understand objections, the biggest question will be is uh, why should someone buy from you now? And this will go against all philosophy of what you talk about in the table because if we say why someone should buy now? So why should someone should buy now? Because they get all these extra bonuses if they buy now. And no. They won't if they wait. No. No. I, so you know, bonuses is one of them. Like like bonuses is one of them. But why people should buy now? <coughs> why people should buy now? Because they can benefit from what they buy now. Because they can benefit if they buy now. So the alternative question will be is, what is not the benefit of not buying now? Right. Which basically, <laughs> what will happen if they don't buy now? Okay. <laughs> they miss the benefit. So which is which is how we can capture that? How we can communicate this particular benefit? So if you don't buy now, what will happen? You will lose out on the bonus. You will be Forget about the bonus for now. business will become worse in my case, or you will feel worse. It'll be harder for you to come out. You'll have to spend more money uh, later on to fix it. So you know when Einstein did not define insanity, but everybody claimed that Einstein defined insanity? So what's an insanity? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again with this no new result. Who, def who made this definition? Was it Einstein? I no. I wasn't sure if it came from there. Or no, not. everybody attributes this definition to Einstein, but he is not the one who did this definition. Okay, I don't know. Who but it's amazing. Like, like there's half of the internet articles about this particular quote will say, will have proof that Einstein never said so. Oh. Okay? So doing the same thing and expect different results is one reason for people to buy now. So seeing the change now is what matters. That's right. So when you convince somebody, will you buy this? And it doesn't matter if you don't sign up right now, what will happen to you? You will stay where you are. And you are even much worse than where you are because you basically everybody will go ahead of you and you will lose the opportunity of making money. So when somebody come and say, we are busy with a project and you don't have time for your uh, change management workshop, so what you will say? You will say, well, you know what? The change can happen anytime. And by the way, if you don't sign up now, what will happen? You will come by now, you will stay where you are. You stay where you are. And, uh, when, and if, if things will change and you, ha you need to use this, I will not be around. So why you don't train your people and wait for? If somebody will come and say, oh, we are hiring a new patch of people, so wait till we run the workshop for all of them, what you will say? It's good you do that, but let's start with the current people and I will honor the same discount for the others. So you must figure out why people should buy now. Okay. So what was the uh, the quote? The quote was doing the same thing and ex uh, expecting different results and expect different results. Doing the exact same thing. Doing the exact same thing and expect different results. So this quote is not attributed to Einstein by any mean. There's actually research on the internet on that. Yeah, I'm just looking now. I'm not giving anybody credit. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's said he could go to May Brown or Brent Franklin as well. Yeah, I know. I just it's, uh, um, uh, there is one thing you have to understand: the audience you are dealing with, except maybe Rob, are really ignorant. And if you know their uh, the space, they they fly into it and they go to it. You can understand exactly what their limitation. But sometimes you'll be both like, why did I, the question is why did I search the background of this particular quote? Because I had it in my presentation and I was put on the front of extremely high intellectual individuals who are scientists. And I want to use the right things. So when you stand in front of intelligent audience like scientists or these uh, geeks or these weird people, you have to make sure everything I'm saying is right. So I said, let me check out the year and the date where he put this particular quote to give them the real, the real reference. And guess what? He didn't. I didn't find a single credible source who said Einstein. On the other hand, I found so many articles will say people attribute this to Einstein and however Einstein never did it. Never said we it. don't know who, the, who did this quote. Mike, what did you find? Uh, it looks like it came out of Narcotics Anonymous in uh, about 1981. Narcotics Anonymous? <laughs> yeah, it was part of a medical. Because uh, it comes out of uh, oh, the cool clinical person. professional and community. And please, 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 I have a podcast. I said, who do you quote? It's a free podcast. You can just download it and listen to it. Using of quotes is very critical. Because... You can use a quote where you shut down your customers. So using this quote in particular, if people in the room will know that Einstein never did it, it takes, so it takes away what? Credibility. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm basically a liar. I can talk about myself, okay? So I'm not... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, if I come but and say Einstein that. said that... Yeah, you don't have to say it's not Einstein. Okay. Now, if on the other hand, I do my homework on this particular quote, and I come and say, everybody is using this quote, which is insanity means, and people will repeat behind me, and everybody will attribute them to Einstein, and people will say, yes, it means that I know. And when I say Einstein never did it, and oh. somebody in the crowd or in the group will check like what Mike is doing, and they found out that Einstein never did it, never said just such thing. It gave me what? immediate credibility that's I do know more so quotes are very critical and if you deal with this individual scientist I'm not saying that everybody else is lower IQ but there are a class of people when you deal with they have a photographic memory and they remember the exact quote like uh, Rob for example said exactly the same thing the exact same thing so what Rob remember is the exact same thing so if I want to repeat the quote I have to use the same exact word so you may, you must check your quotes. Because one of the audience there will say, oh, you know, he never said so. I have the proof, it will take away credibility. everything. It will take away everything. Well then what I would say is that I heard about this quote, but I don't know who said it. So you cannot say that. So you basically avoid saying this quote. This is called a saying. The famous saying. The famous saying. Okay. okay. Number two is when I pick up a quote. So who is the most transformational leader we know? The most famous one right now. Uh, Winston Tony? Churchill. No, no, no. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Anthony Robbins. Anthony yeah. Robbins. Oh, okay. Uh, wheelchair guy. Hawking. So what will happen yeah. if I am in, in front of my customers who are highly paid, potentially highly paid clients? And I give a quote on Tony Robbins. Who I will sign to? My program or Anthony Robbins program? Anthony uh, Robbins. So what will happen if you, s if you share sales training and you quote Brian Tracy? They're going to look at Brian Tracy's. Yeah. That's right. Offerings. So when you have quotes, it must be for what? Dead people. Okay, 
I don't know how many people will, will tell you that, but they must be dead people who are not offering a legacy program. So TV Eckerd is promising, he's delivering this uh, big potential and uh, whatever he's doing. But so if you will say his quote, and what will happen then? People who are high paid clients will go to this source. So usually avoid, in the very beginning, you avoid to play the quote games because quoting somebody who is better than you, uh, remember that. away from your credibility. No, no, it will turn away your customers or your clients to somebody else. Because who is the credible now? Like individuals will use this because they want to be current. They say, oh yeah, you know, we read this book and we read this book and we read this book. It's great. If you read all of these books, why do I listen to you? Why I don't go and read these books like you? Do you understand the perception? Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how many uh, shared with you these particulars about how to get your presentation to the level. Because they just say, oh yeah, you should quote some people and. There's actually an individual, uh, Scott, he will come after your presentation and they will say, can I ask you two questions? Like, I'm just giving the presentation to sell. And I'm supposed to go down to close objections and to close deals. And he wants me to stand on the stage to answer two questions. What is the most recent two books that you read? You read? And I don't remember what is the other question. Is that, is that a much sillier? Who is your role model? It was like very silly questions. This events you should not participate in it, because after your presentation and you get down from the stage, what you do? You go by the door, collecting, uh, signing sheets, answering questions to overcome objection. If I will spend three to five minutes answering these questions, people will start to leave if they're not interested, and the one who will stay will be in the mood to buy, or they will be waiting for the next speaker. It takes, like I had one time, uh, one fellow who said, oh, so thank you guys, and now give a high five. And this killed the whole sales process. And this guy was fired. Because the minute you close the sale, I'm getting down, nobody should uh, change the mode of the room. That's it, full stop. And that's why we had no business for like three months till we get the next workshop at the time. And this guy was fired. Because he's not supposed. He said, no, I felt the room is quiet. He said, I need the room quiet. And people will be moving back because I know what I'm doing. When we end the second workshop, I, he, he, he learned what I, what I, that I knew I'm doing because he sees the sign up. And I said, you know what? You, we cannot continue this relationship because you don't get it. So selling to one too many is very, there's so many things can get wrong. And one thing will shut down the whole thing. One thing, okay? So you quote who? People who are? Gone. And they have no Legacy no similar competing program. Otherwise, the high paid customers will go where? So Scott will stand and he'll talk about how, how, how he will go and uh, attend mm -hmm. all Tony Robbins and how he will participate in his workshops and how he's a fan of how Tony Robbins. And if somebody's really interested in transforming. Even when he practice uh, activities, he said, yeah, I learned this from attending Tony Robbins events. So it, he's so proud of it. However, it takes all the credibility because you are basically copying somebody else, which is not ethical. Secondly, if you are so proud about him and I can afford the $20,000, $50,000 to join his program, why I will pay you $20,000? Make sense? Remember, people will buy because you have 10%, which is you. <coughs> the rest is available at our cousin Google. When I come and say it's not me, it's Shamir. So you'll come buy from me or buy from Shamir. Does it make sense? So that's why I never get into teaching how to use these quotes, but I usually do it on one-on-one. -on -one and uh, quotations is very dangerous. There was a quote uh, the other day, uh, Karen McGraw was sharing it, and this is actually an Islamic quote from Ali bin Abi Talib, 
when he talks about uh, that you don't attach yourself to things so you let things attach to you so basically when you want to give up or uh, you don't really hold to uh, to money or hold to luxury or hold to anything so you can have an easy life so I told her like and she was misspelling the, the, the quote I said like who is giving this quote like do you know who this quote come from so she called it Mali Abi Talib Ibn Abi Talib so Mali because when the way they write Ali they put hyphen Ali they write it like this or they write it like this so because they have the hash whatever source she got it from is called Mali but I know the quote and she said so I said do you know who said this quote she said oh do you know I said yeah here is a guy who said it in this particular event in this particular year and by the way his name is wrong so be careful because she's a speaker a coach as well and uh, this immediately take away everything so be careful when you quote somebody <coughs> So it's um, the Bruce, Dr. Bruce Lipton, where who highly promotes Psyche. So he has a quote to recommend Psyche. That's yep. still a good one because, because he doesn't have his own program. Because you are the exclusive one in Western Canada doing yeah. it. So, yeah. so your case is special. Yeah, but Bruce Lipton doesn't have a program that competes with. No, and he yeah. doesn't have his program yeah. that competes with me. Yeah. So, so this is safe. But when somebody comes and talk about, I want to teach you sales. And uh, Brian Tracy said, so and so and so, and uh, okay. So, if I, if I can afford fifty thousand dollar training, will I pay it for you or I will pay it for Tri Brian Tracy? If somebody will come and say, oh, and uh, TV Acar said so and so, or uh, Bob Brachter now is coming back with another program. Uh, so, if I afford fifty a hundred thousand uh, dollar training, will I pay you or I pay Bob Brachter? That's it. Okay. Very logical. So if this is logical, why people don't use it? So why is the stuff when sometimes I say, guys, you say it's so logical. Like, why you didn't do it before? Uh, oh. I know it's frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's it's frustrating. However, I love the fact Almost that. Almost like insanity. <laughs> 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 yeah, nah. <laughs> okay. So the original question is why should someone buy your service or buy from you now so it's buy from you and now so you must buy now because if you want to start a business you will know exactly how to start the business right and how to start your books right this right however if you are in a business and you want to switch it or shift it or grow it or increase or make it better it will give you good insights on how you can have better books which will help you make more informative decision. If you want to explore why your business is losing money, the first step is clean up the books. So I'm giving you a system to clean up the books. So these are three ways, three things, which will allow you to do what? To articulate why they should buy now. And guess what? If you wait, what will happen when uh, these guys will call you back? CRA will call you back, what will happen? you may not have enough time to do the whole work. Right. Does it make sense to you? So each one of you should have this kind of answers why people should buy now. The next question, which we discussed it before in uh, the product sheet, what can I add to make this offer even more compelling and this is where the bonuses will come so what can I add to make this offer even more compelling so what is the easiest ones you can offer What is the most valuable things in your life that if nobody's paying you for it, it become free? Time. 
So what is the most, the, the, what you can offer is you can offer three, two to three hours or, or uh, complimentary consultation with you. Okay. So you can come and say, I am look, uh, if you, if you really sign up right now, I can give you one hour assessment, two hours, whatever uh, amount. So one to three hours assessment. Okay. How you can make the offer more compelling? You can throw in some books. You can throw in workbooks. What else you can do? You can give exclusive access to uh, espresso shots. To what? Espresso shot. Espresso? Espresso shot. Espresso shot. It's not espresso. It's named espresso. Espresso. It's my program. Okay. You know, espresso and espresso is one of the of the most uh, mistaken words. So people will stand in uh, in. Uh, uh, Starbucks and say, can I have a venti cafe with extra espresso shot? Huh. It's not espresso, it's espresso. Espresso. It's not espresso. Espresso, the express is the train. Like the trains, yeah. that's right? Yeah. Trains used to be called express. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So espresso means the train. It's not <laughs> <laughs> express. No, yeah, this is called espresso. Yeah. This is called yeah. espresso. So, like so then. What this is one of is the that a, a compelling offer because the espresso shots are 15 minutes presentations including meditation where he offers so if somebody sign up for his program and he say i will give you 40 sessions recorded uh, recording of 40 meditation different meditations techniques that you can try you can see the results out of it this will be a com an extra compelling thing I never heard of that before. I'm so young, you know. I'm, I, I'm glad when I hear something new. <laughs> no, he is his his uh, his um, 15, 15 minutes program called Espresso Shots, and he, it will have a five to ten minutes meditation in each one of them. So if I give you a forty a forty uh, meditation, and you can meditate every day with a different sequence or a different uh, what you call it meditation what song. No, it's just, it's just practice. It, you practice the heart mind coherence meditation technique, yeah. and then uh, you get a different topic each week. So it's all around personal development. Yeah, yeah, Should yeah, I yeah, have yeah. talked about Is that it? your own term, no espresso shot? It's not a term. Yeah. Oh, it's your own term. So you, it's it's you not an industry that? term. No, 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 it's his own term. Oh, OK. That's your because it's potent and it's fast. So you could call it a power nudge then. It, it's right. basically what it's a, it's a yeah. power shot. Did you yeah. copyright it? No, I have not. So, so the this, you did, you the people <laughs> using that term. Yeah. Yeah. did you notice what happened here is when I start to say espresso shot, you guys start to be interested well, yeah. to learn more. This is exactly what you need to trigger. That's why when we come and say for your business, you must have a secret sauce, a secret sauce name. So what is the secret sauce name you have? So for me, it's called Piata. This what we what we what we use is how to put the things together, and this basically what you experience here is how the same concept will flow among different angles and different prospects or different facets of your business, and to be a coherent offer, and this what make it a solid business ready to grow. So he has a espresso shot. What does this mean? So all of this special, he has um, emotion intelligence. What do you mean? All of these are meant to uh, stimulate discussions, trigger interest, so people can get to know more. Does this make sense? Yes. So if it makes sense, please figure out a way to use it. Because remember, in Knowing information is a fantasy, and transformation will only happen once you ch once you apply the information. So learning information is a fantasy. People have the, like a fantasy, like you look at the Disney movie. The minute you start to apply 
information to your business, to your life, you will start to have transformation. Transformation will happen. And the difference between somebody is taking action and somebody is not, is somebody li want to live in the fantasy and somebody wants to really change. And that's why I agree with you, Claudia. Like, you have to say no to everything. Like there was a lady didn't come today and uh, she basically closed down all of her, uh, uh, what's called, uh, all of her uh, volunteering uh, time because she was just over volunteering all the time. So when we volunteer, when we do stuff, when we go to a meetup for no reason, believe me, if you sit home and you try to work on some aspect of your business, you'll be more productive. Like, I wish I can just sit home and do nothing. I will be more productive and make more money. So what was your uh, top word there? It's, it's Piata. This is Piata? the top word. Piata. Piata? Yeah. And what does it stand? Put it all to action. Put? Put it all to action. Put it all to action? Yeah. Put it all to action? Yeah. Just... So you can come up with, you can, and there are ways to come up with this secret sauce. Psych K is an example. So Psych K, Psych is a, just as they took like three, four letters of a word. That's right? Yeah. Uh, Comcast, you know, you know Comcast, which is a communication company, is communication and cast stands for what? Broadcast. Broadcast, okay. So Comcast. So when you come up with these names, you, you should, figure out names and we can sit around the table here and use it. And this is what you'll be selling. So people will understand your new problem. So is there any other things you can add to make your offer compelling? Well, I think that uh, that in and of itself is a huge nugget because there are many people whose curiosity have been completely, not completely, but largely suppressed. And if you can stimulate curiosity in somebody, holy smoke. I mean, that's very compelling. And this is uh, easiest way, is just to make it sacred sauce. In one of the exercises of branding, if you attended the branding, the branding workshop, there's 19 questions, I think. And one of them is to put a secret sauce to your seven steps program. And then this now will become, I will go to the extreme and I will pay $400, 200 each time to basically trademark this. So my trademarks have been paying me very well. And uh, I was able to sue the big, the, the huge guys. So, so this trademarks is, is another business. That's if you want to protect yourself. You know, but it's expensive to get a trademark. No, it's uh, four hundred dollars. Well, I spent way too much money then. If you get a lawyer, it will be for between four to ten thousand dollars. But if you want to do it yourself, it's a two hundred, four hundred dollars to the government. That's it. That's something I have to learn. Okay, <coughs> it's not have to learn. It's basically there are there are free samples online where you can just use. And guess what will happen if you if you do it, if you do it wrong. The minute you have enough money, you can hire lawyers to fix it. It's not hard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, any anyone wants to contribute one more compelling things to, to add? What's that word out there? One, two, three hours. It's so it can be. Uh, what is it? What's the two words below it? Complementary. Complementary. Cost. Consultation. Consult. Complementary Com consultation. Oh, consult. Okay. You can have uh, books, e-books. Yeah. You can have uh, uh, workbooks. You can have. You can actually offer VIP or preferred seatings. You can offer free warranty or extended warranty if you like. Okay. You said something about throws. Sorry? I thought you said something about throws. Throws. <coughs> throws. No? 
Slower. Yeah, that's a thrown preferred seating. Throw in preferred seating? Yeah. Or throw go in preferred seating. Yeah, you can either, you said a fifth one, you can, as a bonus, it would be VIP seating or, or preferred seating. So if I'm selling a workshop for like uh, $100, I can uh, get people at uh, 600 for uh, VIP. I can see, you know, right now is 297 for VIP or 397 for VIP. Make sense? Okay. Um, the last, one of the last elements we want to talk about, we want to talk about value of what you offer. So we talked about cost. Now, what is the value of what you offer? So to just put us into perspective, how many of you here is 100% is a vegan or 100% vegetarian? Okay. So you have to put up with this example, okay? Are you vegetarian? Okay. So if you have about eight ounce, eight ounce beef, okay? And you have it at keg, you have it at the uh, Safeway, and at present choice and you have it at this uh, Calgary Tower restaurant the revolving restaurant or and you have it at the Fairmont Hotel which one is the best place to have steak probably Fairmont probably Fairmont so how much do you pay for this meal in Fairmont Hotel you have the mortgage <laughs> no, no, that's the Calgary Tower one. Uh, Calgary uh, Cruz, no. uh, Cruz, Cruz, okay. Uh, so Chris, maybe uh, here, uh, maybe here you'll be bucks. looking for s how much? Fifty to seventy. Yeah, seventy. Bucks. Seventy bucks. Maybe here you look for like fifty bucks. Yeah. Here is about thirty bucks. Yeah. Here you maybe ten bucks, and here is like five bucks. You can buy a um, steak at the Dollar Dollar Tree in the states. Yeah, you can. I've seen those. Yeah. Okay. Dollar stores. <laughs> Which one is healthier than the other one? They're all healthy. Uh, they're yeah. just cooked differently. No, I, I, you know, Fairmont and, and Roots Chris Steakhouse, they're, uh, they differentiate themselves. They, they have grass-fed beef and all that. So that's why they can charge you more money. But a lot of their, their beef is sourced from the uh, grass-fed and all that. So it depends on, on which one. Which one is grass fed and the one which one is not grass fed? <laughs> By the way, all of them came from which cows? The fat ones. <laughs> Alberta cows and the Alberta cows in winter time, they have no grass. Well, they eat hay. That's grass. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so well, there is no free run cows. Okay. There is <laughs> free run hens, <laughs> but there is no free run cows. Okay. <laughs> the point I want to say is. People will go and pay 70 bucks to 100 bucks in a restaurant versus if they cook it at home, it might be less than 10 bucks. And this is healthy because I know every single <laughs> sauce. I know every single thing in it. So why people will, will be happy to pay 70? But when they go to present a choice and they will say, oh, it's five bucks. Let's wait on the offer. Yeah. The experience. It's experience. It's what we call it perceived value. When you go to a cheap place, you, you have a value of what? Getting cheap stuff. If you go to a decent restaurant, you expect to have high quality to pay more. By the way, they are the same cooks, the same place. The only difference is these people will pay more taxes to the government than these guys here. That's I would it. argue they're a better cook than I am. <laughs> That's it. Even the <laughs> recipe also, you have different things. You, know? right? you can buy the keg, uh, the keg spices, you can actually buy them here. Uh, I, I would like to okay. think they're not the same. But anyways, I went to the keg and, and the same. guy oh, says, yeah. comes to the table and he says, how did you enjoy your lunch? I said, it was delicious, I ate it all. 
but uh, Smugglers uh, does a better stick than you. <laughs> you did not really? say that. Oh, yes, I did. Is there a Smugglers here? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, 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 and, yes, and he said, really? Oh. I said, yes. Well, he said, we'll buy you dessert. I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> so but it was better at Smugglers. Okay, that's good to know. Because I used to go to Smugglers in the U.S. They have uh, a, a Vegas. It's on the Cloud Trail. Oh, okay. Check it out. South of Glen Roy. Steak in Oklahoma is better than it is in Alberta. Just throwing it out. <laughs> it's amazing. I would have never believed it. Right. They We're talk about how great right. Alberta beef is and stuff, but. Yeah. I went to uh, uh, Fargo, North Dakota, and they, uh, they cook there a very interesting steak. They put it in the hay fork and they deep fry it, which is junk, uh, chunks of sticks, like this thing. Deep fry the steak. Yeah, it's a very common in, uh, uh, they said in Saskatchewan, in Saskatoon, and it's very common in uh, Fargo. Mm -hmm. So you got like, this uh, stick, which deep fried, uh, and they put them in a hay, you know the hay fork, is, is, it has a big, yeah. Uh, yeah. so they put like fork. 20 or 30 each uh, middle, and then they just put it in a very, oh, okay. and then what's funny in the, par in the story is, I have been through so many people who are talk about like they have all everybody has like their green shapes and they but each one wants to experience this one. So when you look at it, it's saturated fat, oversaturated fat, which is very heavy. So I had a stomach ache like the, I, I didn't eat full, I eat like a little bit, but I'm not used to fried stuff. So if I eat fried, I will have a stomach ache because I'm not, we don't fry anything at our house for the last five years. So people will want to have the experience. You drink coffee? Yep. So let's talk about coffee. So if you look at um, 16 ounce or 12 ounce of coffee. So 12 ounce of coffee in the motor hotels or the local hotels, you can look at Starbucks you can look at Phillies uh, or Upper Ground, and you can look at uh, Tim Horton, and you can look at uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Can you guess the prices of these? Can you what? Guess the price. Yeah. What? Hotel is free. It's in your room. So this one here is about the dollar, unlimited. You can have a free refill. That's right. Restaurant? They have this, uh, it's a very, very typical white uh, mug. In the hotel. Yeah, in the yeah, hotel, yeah, it's very hotel. typical. All of them have the same mug, I don't know. And they come with the crowd. <laughs> you know, it's just very interesting. Um, the same thing, you can pay for it at Phil and the areas which they sell you organic, about $5. Here, it's a, here is 175, here is 145, and this one it's about 255. Starbucks? Yep. The small yeah. ones. Yep. The 12 ones. So, uh, the 12 ones. Okay. Why? Which, by the way, which one of these three, which one of these four is the most recent one? The most recent one? Yeah, is the uh, youngest one in the market. I think McDonald's, no, no Phil's, I think. Fells, yeah. Fells is, um, is the most recent one. This is a bit less than 10 years. I don't even know it. It's a, it's a chain. What, they call it Fell and what? Phil Sebastian. Phil Sebastian. Yeah, Phil Sebastian, yeah. Never heard of it. Jewish chain. Yeah. In Philip Mall. You don't have heard of it because you don't want to pay $5 for a coffee. I'm already paying that at Starbucks. <laughs> well, you're, no, that's, a lot, that's a latte. That's different. That's I don't even want to pay that. <laughs> so, um, so this is the most recent one. The, this the Starbucks is the sec is the second uh, youngest one, and Tim Horton came after, and then Donald uh, 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 Dunkin Donuts. When did McDonald's come? McDonald's not that old. Well, McDonald's came out four four four, uh, four about three four years ago. Coffee? Sure. Yeah. They used to always have coffee. It was in the cafe branding. Oh, they, the cafe they brand, didn't yeah. send. McDonald's didn't sell coffee in uh, the, the chain stores. It, they didn't. 
No, that's very recent, I think, a couple of years ago. When they introduced the breakfast, they didn't have breakfast even. Yeah. Like McDonald's did not have breakfast. Did not. Ten years ago, they did not have breakfast. Right, yeah, they didn't. We didn't have breakfast. McDonald's and Burger King, they never had breakfast. McDonald's had breakfast for years. For the, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, they didn't have breakfast. Yes, they did. I, I, that, that was my first job. We sold the egg and muffin and the three pancakes. When? Yeah. 1975, when I worked there. Oh, yeah, that, that was the big thing. Our breakfast is always there. Three pancakes. And, and sausage, and the, and the sausage round, okay. or the Egg McMuffin. Egg McMuffin was their first product. It was one of their lead products. It was the Big Mac and the Egg McMuffin. Okay, I didn't know that. I saw it, because in the US, I we never had... With, uh, with uh, whatchamacallit, uh, hash brown. Okay. McDonald's hash brown. Which is my favorite meal, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> my like favorite meal. So, the question, the question here, <laughs> the question here is, when you have these five, um, um, why do you accept paying two, three dollars at uh, Starbucks for the same coffee, which is I one dollar here? I don't accept it. I don't go there. So many people do. Nobody so does. why people like to go here? <coughs> They're ignorant. Go back to the I word, ignorant. <laughs> people go here because these people sell what? These people don't sell coffee. These people sell coffee experience. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, um, Starbucks is about coffee experience. So what's Phil's about then? I, like, I don't know. Phil's goes with... Uh, That's back to high the, end the, quality? The, the, no, 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 no. It's, a, it's a, by, by, uh, it's the organic thing. It's <laughs> the organic coffee. Between, 70, between 72 and 75. What? 72. 72. Well, 72 was the muffin, muffin. but the yeah. egg was five years before. Or breakfast officially went into effect. Yeah. So somewhere around seventy-two. To my point is, these people will sell organic coffee, or fair trade, or both. Or fair trade. What's the difference between fair trade and organic? One is that they pay the farmers. Uh, you know, I, I think it's different. Yeah. Okay. yeah trade so yeah. fair trade also yeah. goes fair to chocolate, yeah. hot chocolates, and chocolate fair trade hot chocolates. So yeah. somebody will come and say, I will make twenty percent profit on whatever I will buy and then they'll come to you and say we sell we buy this stuff as a fair as a fair trade so they sell you a cause so they make more money because 20% yeah. out of a fair trade price is much more than 20% out of not a fair trade price well because the perception is that it, you paid a higher cost so you have to charge everybody a higher amount yeah so this is what perceived value so the question back to you guys on your program or your offer, how you can justify a perceived value. Like for me, if I sell you a training program or a program which you can make ten, twenty thousand dollar a month on it after six months to eight months, I can charge because I can see that I can show the value. So the question for you is how you can articulate this perceived value. somehow be able to quantify it yes so you quantify it against what your features results uh, results or competition against your base amazing so so when you want to do a perceived value you have to quantify it against results or competition that's right or what what is priceless? What does priceless mean? I'm offering you this service and it's priceless. I have it in my, uh, in my sales presentation, by the way. I have some items which is priceless. Okay, cool. Anybody can't qualify it. Okay. So when you talk about transformation, people's life, it has to be priceless. Prices. So you have to provide few things which has perceived values, and then you come and articulate is priceless. If you cannot articulate the perceived values, who will articulate it on your behalf? In other words, your audience. 
Can an audience articulate a perceived value that you cannot, as a supplier, articulate it? Yeah. Well, they can take assumptions. So you want to control this assumption, or you want to let them no, take the assumption? You want to control. Want to control. Then say it's too much. Okay. Yeah. So uh, perceived. There are so many. <coughs> um, there are so many um, things we can talk about in perceived values. So one of the points I highlighted before is. People will wait here, like the same family, which will go here and they will spend ten, five people will pay this price. The whole family will wait here on the flyers and they will look to the flyers to try to get a discount on the meat. Okay. So because here they perceived by the way, after you eat all of this food, what where it will go? It'll go half. half it go to the city uh, city yeah. municipalities, right? The municipality services, right? What did you do? After you eat all of this food, where it will go? To the municipalities, right? Yeah. <laughs> it will be flushed in the toilet, okay? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> oh, this is another story. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you must be able to articulate this perceived value. So what's the second word? Uh, result after that you wrote what? Competitive. Combative? Competition? Or competition. What else? You, you can it. also talk about the loss. Yes. Yes. Loss of opportunity. So what is the loss of opportunity? Somebody doesn't hire you right now or do it for you right now, look at how much money you're losing up to Yep. Excuse me, what was the question? Um, the third way is the loss of opportunity. So if you don't do this right now, how much will you lose? Does this make sense? Can you articulate this about your offer? One way is the labor now is very uh, cost effective because there is not too much jobs. So if you wait a little bit, you will hire a more expensive labor. That's right. So you, you can take it as a, as a homework to how to, ca to drive a perceived value to what you get. So perceived, perceived value. People have different perceptions. Yes, people have different perceptions. And uh, um, so you've got to know your audience. Okay. To know their, val their perceived value. Or you want to know your audience to drive a higher perceived value. So he's saying that they're going to either come up with a, a perception of the value or you're going to tell it to them. So you have a choice. Do you want to tell them what it is or do you want them to come up with it by themselves? Thank you. Like, like when we went around with, uh, with Rob for a solution, everybody said they're looking for $10,000 solution. And we couldn't figure out what the $10,000 solution is, right? But whenever we go and say you have this kind of service, people say, oh yeah, well, it's very expensive. We, are, we, are, we can budget $10,000. So I went back to the guy, I said, can you really find a competitor who's selling it for $10,000? The reality is we couldn't find. We found people who are putting on their website, it will start at 14,000 and uh, 12,000 and stuff like that. But our concern is none of them will deliver at these prices. They will always have somewhere else getting more money. Okay, is nothing different from when you go to McDonald's? Like, like how many how many of you here eats at McDonald's or Burger King? Do you perceive yourself paying nine dollars a meal there? Easily. For a per, per person. Like right now. Right now. If you go to their meals, their meals are between eight to nine dollars a person. Yeah. Because they run all of this all this kind of promotions. 
So right now what they do is they, they, they are increasing the prices to be like between eight to nine dollars a meal and then they give you these coupons for uh, 11, uh, two can eat for uh, 11.50 I believe times two or 5.75 per meal. So when you go to these stores right now, you will find that they are shifting and making us used to have higher prices because at certain points they will take away this offer. It takes about 18 months to two years. And the 8.9 becomes 11.50. And the 8.9 will become 11.50. And then they will reduce it to 8 and 9. Okay? So I, when you go to fast food, Five dollars a person will be the max. That's right, or like five to six dollars, like in the neighborhood of five bucks for a meal. But here you go, like it's <laughs> it's significant. Like when if you if you read if you go there and uh, analyze what they are doing, this is exactly what they are doing. They are changing all the stores. They are putting all of this technology, and they were making us paying for it here. And what will happen in the future? They will take away these coupons. And you end up being here. Okay? Because they run also, in McDonald's in particular, they run also uh, their coffee, and people like their coffee. They run their, their largest coffee at 195, their X large size, to compete against who? Against Tim Horton, who's bought by uh, Burger King, their main competitor. And these guys, they don't get it. So what happened here, it used to be Burger King. 190, yeah, Burger King bought Wendy's. Wendy's. Yeah. Wendy's. No. No. Burger King acquired Tim Hortons and Wendy's. And Wendy's. Yes. Three years? Three years? Two years? Four years? No, they actually acquired them and they moved the headquarter from the US to here because they saved right away about $600 million in taxes by moving the headquarters to here. So the transaction went as if Tim Horton actually is acquiring Burger King, not the opposite. Yeah, it's a reverse buyout. It's a reverse buyout. Because Wendy's bought Tim Hortons first. Dave Thomas had bought Tim Hortons. There was a transaction happened about two years ago. No, this was about seven, eight years ago. No, no, no. This transaction happened two yeah, years ago. Okay. So the point I want to say here is what happened at Tim Hortons, they went from $1.95 uh, to $2. To $2. And the most recent things, they are about $2.20, uh, including GST, so they are $2.10. So these guys actually increase their prices, and uh, McDonald's actually reduce the prices because they want to kill these guys' business. <coughs> and they go in and they run promotion that this will run at 50% discount. So it's $1 a cup, any size. And they will do this like eight months a, a year to kill these guys' business. Only if you drive through. No, no, everywhere, Pretty even much. in the store. In the store now? Yeah. yeah. And they do they alternate between a specialty coffee for a dollar, so you get a specialty dollar coffee for two dollars, uh, x large, to uh, one dollar any size, because they want to kill these guys, and they are actually har harming them to the extent that Tim Horton now is giving you fifty percent discount if you buy from Groupon a gift card. This is how bad the industry is right now for Tim Horton. So if you are into franchise, don't buy Tim Horton. I have another coffee franchise, which is, I'm working with the owners actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, but these are the, some of the dynamics in the market. So about two months ago, you can buy a Tim Horton gift card from Groupon, five bucks for a $10 gift card. Really? Yep. Say that again? You can buy on Groupon, Group on, yeah, yeah. you can buy for five dollars a ten dollar gift card from Tim Horton. I missed that one. Yeah, I'm not sure it's, it's still valid or not, but uh, it Probably was there like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Really? Yeah. So because they are suffering from low sales here. Okay. So what you do to increase the perceived value? in front of your customer's eyes, what do you, what you do? You basically tell them stories about how other people got results. So testimonials here would be a good thing to use. 
Okay. Uh, what else you can have to increase their perceived value? Could you do a table like big, good, better, best? Yeah. 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 Where, whereby you're showing what they offer with three X's and yeah. <coughs> middle, and then what you offer with everything that you have, and just load it up with features. Yep. Yep. You can do this comparable, but the, if you have testimonials, this will get you the value. It is one way to enrich the value. So when you come and say, I want to change management workshop, it's great. Can you give the perceived value? So if you save if you save the company hundred thousand dollar a project or a couple of hundred thousand dollar a project, it will make sense for them to come and pay you ten thousand dollars. That's right. So mm -hmm. the question is, can you find a testimonial or you find somebody who can articulate that's using your technique, or you can find an example which this example will show that you save that much money? If the answer is yes, articulate it. Mm -hmm. Is it logical? Yep. And uh, please spend some time when you go on your own, like one hour a day, to do this homework because I cannot do it for you. You can nobody else can do it for you. Even your uh, web developers, your bookkeeper, whatever you're working with, you cannot do that because you are the one who will be able to stand and talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Anybody lost or everybody is still? intact okay uh, the biggest things is you have to figure out what people want so the last part or the last message I wanna stress on it is we wanna get what people want So can you figure out what people want? OK, this is the biggest uh, learning from today. If I know what people want, then I can take it, position it, articulate it, and <coughs> do everything. Any questions? OK. So. What? I want it all. And I want it now. You can actually create such an environment. If you master the presentation, you can create such an environment. That's a good statement. Yeah. You know? Okay, so if you have no other, no further questions, just uh, let's just go and uh, discuss what, if you want to reflect on what, what we had today. The most important part is how we use what we have today. So I'll give you the re reflection moment. You guys now on mic. That's the mic? Yeah. Hmm. Looks like an old fashioned type of a. Good morning, America. That's the kind of mic he had. So, what is the reflection you have? Shamir, what's the reflection? Or a well, it helps organize the. It helps organize the benefits, your, your features, and then how you express that, and how you can actually sell on benefits, but people buy on features. So that was a big like distinction for me. And how will you apply this to whatever you're doing? Uh, several ways. I need to articulate exactly what you said. It's a distinction between what, what people are saying they want and what really they want, what they really need. So that distinction will help bridge the gap between what they're saying and how I can reframe it to say this is really what you need. Okay, good. good. You wanna reflect what? Uh yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is seeing it from your client's perspective. Is, you know, we, we know about our, our business, but how do we position it? How do we uh, state it? How do we present it and meet the client's needs? It's always about the client, not about. Uh, mm -hmm. It's always about them, not about you. Okay. Uh, 
Mm, one thing that's most important for me is to uh, not to offer two sales when I'm, you know, asking for 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 uh, for sale. You know, focus on one thing and not to not confuse them. And um, well, really going for the benefits, but also asking the questions. In you know, on uh, if they're ready to for for if they're ready to buy and you know going for the benefits. Yep. And uh, from your sales cycle, when you meet somebody, before you meet them, you must decide which one of these you want to yeah. sell them to. Mm -hmm. And if they don't buy this, is there any a lower offer? Mm -hmm. So this is what we used to call it. Uh, Plug the leak. So if you funnel people in this way, if you want to funnel these people this way, and people will just leak out from your funnel, you should have a lower offer, like uh, $7 for people who cannot afford it, against uh, $49 or $15, $14 for people who can afford it. This is basically to plug this leak. Many nuggets in today. I got eight pages worth of nuggets. So, uh, <laughs> or you want them to begin? <laughs> we get the Reader's Digest condensed version. Yeah, the that's one of them. Like this really made it clear for me uh, in the different uh, values of products that can offer. That's very very good. And I uh, and then the the program long term program is also that made that clear. Uh, the other one is um, going ahead of the blows sort of thing or defining for my client what it is they need yep. rather than them giving me their perceived value. Also determining that for them. That's another nugget. Well, I never looked at it that way, you see. Yep. Yeah. And just on the long term thing, if you come to your clients and say, I will offer you a workshop. Yeah. And then I will have a follow-up session yeah. to make sure people apply the learning. You will find it's much easier to sell yeah. than just giving them a workshop and run away. Because everybody is giving a workshop and shy away. That's right? Yes. So you might figure out that you can sell them more because the perceived value is there. And for sure, you are not giving them the follow-up sessions for uh, same price as only the workshop. Right. Make sense? Yep. Good. Oh, sorry. Uh, actually, kind of uh, building on that a little bit too is the, is the question and answers where you, we don't really want we don't really want questions. We want to make sure they're answered before they're before they can derail something mm -hmm. and and also just building on the on the uh, on the on the on the seminars and the value add uh, they we have to make sure our lunch and learn is of a value regardless they, they have to get some value out of that hour that they're spending yep. and and so it, there's there's I mean, we could we could put a lot of pressure on ourselves if we wanted to, which I will refuse to do. That you know, this this could be a pretty critical lunch and learn because if it's a if it's an outright disaster, <coughs> the the word will sp spread pretty quickly that don't bother to bring these guys in for lunch and learn because it's a waste of time. So there's a there's a there's a there is there is a lot of pressure on this to make sure that there is that value on there. But I don't let pressure get to me, so I'm not so I'm not going to go there. Um, and uh, and then kind of going into the, the what people uh, think they want and what people say they want, but what do they really want? And in the elevator business, on the on the residential side, that's that's really super hard. Um, we're literally in the process of right now of somebody saying they want an elevator like this, and now they've come back to me and they say, oh well, what about the elevator code? Well, obviously you don't know the elevator code because you would you would have known that if you wanted this, it doesn't meet the code. So your choice is, do you want a build, an elevator built to the code, or do you want what you really want? Because you can't have both. But they don't know that, but they want to throw that, in my, throw that in my face to say, well, is your elevator built to code? Well, no, but you don't want an elevator built to code. Well, is there a code for your elevator? Well, yes, but like I said, it's a long story. So, but they don't, they don't know what they, they don't know 
Well, they, they know what they want, but they, they don't know what they, they, they have this other, other thing over here, and they need clarification on it. So it's just, Can it's all. Can you elevator that's not the code? Oh, yeah. For it's various people? things. So it's es essentially, it's, it's uh, a residential elevator has to be X by Y dimensions. Right. Which Wait. is retarded. It's your house. You can have an elevator as big as you want. But as soon as it's bigger than what the code says it is, your elevator is no longer a code. An elevator in the residence also has to be a certain speed, which is archaic and stupid. So do you want a slow elevator built to code, or do you want an elevator that you actually enjoy right using it doesn't that is too fast, and therefore it's not built to code anymore? It doesn't uh, overwrite the... Uh, it has nothing to do with safety. No, no le speed. legal stuff or insurance coverage, none of that? No. It's just built to code. So, so why don't tell create, me create your own code and so uh, this is exactly. built to the code is whatever you want it's not built to code because the code is archaic so anyway so one thing about what people walk away from the lunch and learn so if you cover more technologies so you can basically teach them what are the alternative technologies available for this market right then that's and advantage now where it, which uh, which technology will have the most advantage yeah. it's supposed to be used so when, yeah, when we used to go and uh, teach people how to buy camera systems and security systems, it was like a learning curve. You just go there and talk about difference, what's available in the market, and what's the status of the market, and why are better, and uh, uh, why people should buy and stuff like this. So good. Mm -hmm. So Mike, what's your take on today? Uh, I think I kind of follow along with what Rob was saying too. Uh, uh, knowing, knowing, and addressing your audience so they don't discount or di exclude themselves, like the entrepreneur versus the small business owner, and how they identify themselves. Understanding that so that we can speak to all three, perhaps, um, and also understanding uh, what they want uh, as opposed to what they say they want. Mm -hmm. So it's just knowing what's important to them so that. You can you can speak to those to so those wants. Can you apply this? And uh, we are meeting again on Saturday, that's right. Yeah. So on Saturday, can each one of you will come here for five minutes and apply these rules to his offer and present to us your offer, mm. and we will we will give you uh, like we feedback. can give yeah we can give you a feedback as a room and uh, budget for like five to seven minutes max. If you want to practice part of your lunch and learn to as well. So what's the ask? I mean, we'll practice which part? Apply this to your offer, and the government give us five minutes. Tell us five minutes. What's your offer? What's my offer? Okay, okay, got you. Okay. If uh, Rob wants to practice part of his uh, lunch and learn in the five to seven minutes, so expect to have five minutes and five minutes feedback, so ten minutes each. So this can be one hour among the six of here. When is this? We are here Saturday. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. And also on Saturday, we will need to discuss the journaling. So please. You need to discuss what? Journaling, the journaling book. So please fill the journaling if you can for this week, and then we can discuss it. No, that white book that you haven't filled in yet. I started it last week, and I, uh, I did it again, started it again. If last you do week. one week, I will give you a, a second one for next period, okay? And uh, and it is it is in my all, all of two week experience it's it is it's fantastic because it really highlights the things that I need to do. Okay, I can do this here. Okay. Oh yeah, right. I need to do this. I can do this here, and it really lays out. Which stuff. part is the one you like the most out of it? Yes. <laughs> which one? Which 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 block? Which block? Like in the daily block, which one you like the most? Uh, the top three priorities and the okay. to do, yeah. and the and actually the the good things of today as well. Okay. Writing down the. the For me, I like the top the ten minutes things. Like oh, I haven't used that yet, really. Like I Where's that? That's not here. Yeah, the daily it's somewhere. Ten minutes just to get it done. Projects. That's on the weekly. I just I do it in the weekly and I spread it over there and I. I transform everything I want to do in 10 minutes. Oh. <laughs> this how it is. Okay, so if you have, uh, if you don't have any questions, you can just uh, break here and uh, I'll be around if you have any.
Copyright 2017 Win Your Brand. All rights reserved. This video is subject to copyright owned by Win Your Brand. Any reproduction or republication of all or part of this video is expressly prohibited, unless Win Your Brand has explicitly granted its prior written consent. All other rights reserved.